Channel Sport this morning. We're not being joined by basketball writers, analysts, pundits, Femi Adifeso, who's in a great, great mood this morning. That's because Nigeria's D Tigers uh, secured automatic qualification for the Tokyo, to Tokyo 2020 Olympics uh, after defeating China yesterday in the final classification game. Femi, it's great to have you on the show. Honor, fantastic. And a uh, day like this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can see the green as well in your mind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very excited. I'm, like, yeah. I'm excited not just because um, we've qualified, yeah. but because the, there's, there's so much potential in the D-Tigers. Mm. And mm. very soon, we'll become world beaters. Wow. Um, you can take it from me. Wow. Uh, the, this, this is a team that, you know, yeah, it seemed like the, the very beginning, we couldn't get our acts right. Yep. Um, a little bit of some tactical inefficiency from the coach trying to understand his players a little bit. I don't know why. You know, but if you, if you look at how we played after, you know, that Argentina game, right. you know, and then we went on, you know, to our last game, um, we, we played... Our first game was so against Russia. Russia we played Argentina, Argentina South Korea. then then South Korea. I mean, you could see how we came out. Down. There was a reaction, mm -hmm. you know, from from the players because mm -hmm. it was now about look, there's something we need to play for, and I think Femi. that's what the players need Femi. Femi. motivation. Yeah. motivation. <laughs> Let's talk about this game. We're seeing pictures from the matchup against China. That was a very nervy one. First, second, and third quarters are for me. Well, I was worried and. We were playing against the vociferous, you know, supports. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I, I, and I remember going on social media before that game and, yeah. you know, everybody was alluding to the victory of the D-Tigress. Yeah. Hey, look, the D-Tigress did <laughs> this in, right. in Senegal against a, a more boisterous um, crowd. Wow, 15, and, and, 000, yeah, and then you, you, have, you have these guys in China. I think these guys are professional. So yeah. um, I wasn't expecting them. Although I was a bit worried, you know, because consistently we haven't finished very well. Yeah, yeah. yeah our, our last quarter has been a little shaky. And before and, now, and that's usually we're better in the set, third and the final quarter. Exactly. Our third quarter is like our quarter. Like yeah. that's, we just zone in and, you know, we get on get a the run. Job done. So yeah. um, I were leading the first quarter, yes, it was good. And then going into that third quarter, into the fourth, a lot of errors. I think that's one thing that we need to work on. Too many turnovers from these yeah, guys. Even okay. though, you know, by statistics, surprisingly, Nigeria is one of the leading rebounding teams. Yeah. The one of the teams also leading in steals. Mm. You know, as well, the likes of Chimezi too also in blocks. Mm. You know, in this tournament. So you look at you look at the size overall. It's a balance against um, China. I thought we, we let lose a little bit um, in the game, but as the Chinese were beginning to pile up the pressure, you know, the, the guys stepped reacted in well. and, and, and they reacted very well to ensure oh. that we got the win because we couldn't afford any margin for no. error. Tunisia was taking care of business against Angola. Yeah, tough and for them. if they win, we lose, then that's going to be a problem. Qualifies. So we ended up with the same wins and losses, three oh, wins, two three losses. Two. But based on uh, points, points differential, we're on the positive, they're on the negative. Right. I think we are them plus 19, mm -hmm. and they, they are like um, minus, minus yeah. um, four or thereabouts. Okay. So mm -hmm. it was good at the end of the day, you know, that we've taken the easier route yeah, now easy to, way, of course. to the Olympic, Olympics, Games, yeah. which is very, very important. Yeah. Because, hey, the, I think the Olympic qualifying will only give room for three teams yeah. to join the, the remaining one. ones. And it's going to be everybody. Mm. So it's probably going to be just, just like the last one. What they did was, you know, three different, different teams yeah, will host it. Mm. So it could be anybody. Mm. So I decide to host, for example, and then everybody comes in. Yeah. And only one team we'll go will go out. One, so yeah. there could be like six teams in that team yeah. five, fighting for top one ticket. One so that's really going to be very, very tough. Mm. So it's good. We've qualified for Tokyo. Now, everything now has to do with preparation. preparation so, we just really need to key. zero in on that and get the job done. Interesting. Uh, Femi, you mentioned how this team has got great potential and everything. We saw a player uh, who, you know, uh, unarguably uh, shone like a million stars uh, for Josh. Nigeria. Josh Okoge. Right. Uh, you know, um, first time out in the NBA. He lived up, yeah, he lived uh, up, lived up to the hype. Um, I mean, this, these are the numbers that it's come up with. Uh, in that game against uh, China, and um, very impressive, mm -hmm. uh, you'd say. He has done this all competition as well, too, so it shouldn't really come as a surprise uh, to a lot of us. But the fact that he's still a young star. Yeah, I mean, 19 points, 5 more, rebounds, 3 yeah. assists, 2 shows, 2 I mean, blocks. Filling up you know, the that's feeling, Yeah, everywhere, exactly. Yeah. And I, I think for him, he is also a test, because um, it's always difficult transitioning, playing the NBA True. and playing international yeah. basketball. Mm. The ball is different. You know, some of the rules are different Time in terms of... Well. Yeah, so uh, I think it's a good way to start your career. Mm. Still young, lots of potential. And by the way, yes, he was perhaps the most hyped player coming yeah. into this tournament for and Nigeria. He and he lived up to the hype. You know, and I also heard even his team, 
you know, backed him up with some of his um, uh, backroom staff out there in oh, Sora wow. Timba was just to wow. help him get in shape. That was how much interest, the, you know, Josh really had. And for, to, be, to be honest, he was our most consistent player, yeah. perhaps oh, our through, best player through, mm -hmm. throughout yeah. the tournament, even though I think Michael Eric, yeah. you know, gave himself a huge shout yeah. when he was given the chance, the chance to play. By the time he came into that game against Korea, he just stole the show. And ever since he was big, mm. and he, he proved to be to be very, so very that's, consistent. That's, that's one for you people that think basketball is going small these days and there's no <laughs> chance for the big men again. Michael Eric steps in and tells you this is still our game. Yeah, uh -huh. this is this is it. And it also, you such him as him too as well. Give exactly. us some another very big man. yeah, another big guy, six yeah. eleven, yeah. giving us some very good highlights wow. you know, with the dunks and with some very cheeky passes. Mm. Uh, you, you look at it, uh, the, the idea of small ball, I think is just. I would rather reverse it and say more of shooting the basketball than playing close to the basket so and trying things. to dunk and do all those right. things. You know, you look at most of the big men now in the game, from the Serbians, Jokic, you can now shoot the Great ball. Shooters. You know, so it's about not just trying to use your size, size and your power to rock your defender mm -hmm. into the basket. Now you yeah. have to learn to shoot the ball. Yeah. I think that was one of the things that affected, you know, the Greeks, you know, in this one with Yanis, you know. A lot of, but, uh, a lot of let's cut them some slack. They lost to the United States of America, uh, to uh, two-time defending champions. So I mean, no one really expected them to be. Yeah, the but they still, have a, the they still have a back, they still have a back door to come in. The, the US too, they are quite small. Yeah. Um, just Miles Turner, Brook Lopez. Jim you know, Brown. yeah. You, you look at you look at the size. They they, they also everybody saying perhaps that might be their own doing. Especially when they face the likes of Spain or. Serbia at some Okay, point. let's go back to our game, right? Yeah, okay. let's, 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 let's go. <laughs> before, before we continue our conversation, yeah. let's get to listen to uh, the president of um, Nigeria Basketball Federation, uh, Ahmadou Musa Kida, who is uh, very, very satisfied uh, with Nigeria's outing in China. Uh, we have a team that is the best team that has come out of Africa ever. Um, and you can ask the Secretary General of uh, FIBA Africa or the President. Uh, uh, the former president of FIBA Africa, um, who uh, are very convinced about the performance of the boys. In fact, for all those matches uh, that we lost, you could see that it was very, very, very keenly com competitive. Um, and not like the others where they blow you away with uh, 30, 40 points. Um, you know, you just come really to wear your jersey, take a few pictures and go home. So I'm, I'm quite uh, satisfied with the quality of the team. Um, I'm quite happy. Uh, especially the, the match with Argentina um, for what it is uh, that they, uh, they, they played. Um, and then going forward, I think we can only get better. There you go, uh, Musa Kida there. Uh, believing in the potential of this uh, D Tigers uh, side as they go forward. And the next big international for Nigeria is definitely uh, the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. And um, the, uh, I listened to uh, Al Farouk Aminu and mm -hmm. Diogo E.K. Diogo talking about how they can make like they can make serious noise uh, in Japan. I want to ask you now, how loud can they <laughs> get uh, in Japan? Uh, this is going to be back to back to back qualifications uh, for them. They've placed 11th last time out in Rio. Uh, four years uh, down the line, what are you expecting from what you've seen on ground I so far? Really? This was, yes, we may not have gotten the results as much as we want to, but I think this is the best performance we've had. Yeah, you the World know, Cup, yes. At any international Three and competition two. outside of Africa. Yeah. You know, we've managed to win games that were tough. We, were, we stayed close in bigger games. True. You know, I think we've learned a lot. And let's not forget, this is perhaps the first time we're having this number of stars. stars and we yeah, have like NBA players. four players in and out of the NBA that are on this team. We have a lot more that could commit you know, to play into the team. I mean, there's still the likes of Victor Ladipo, mm -hmm. still the likes of Bama Adebayo with Miami Heat, you know, all there. There's Wesley Uwundu, you know, at Orlando Magic. There's um, and the young man at Toronto Raptors. Um, there's Shemi Ojele. Um, with Lo lots Celtics. of Nigerian so players. A lot of all these players now who pass because the law of being an Olympian is, is perhaps wait, you, the, wait, wait, the art oh, of oh, every player, yeah. you know, you could think of. So yeah. with this sort of audition, yeah. That the D Tigers have given okay. everybody who wants to jump so on see. the ship. Okay, if you have it, uh, the D Tigers having the opportunity, you can you know go to the World Cup, be the best uh, you know African team and all that, and get yeah. a ticket to the Olympics. Why is uh, FIBA Africa not having a change of it in the sense that you have our girls you know winning the title and you have to go through qualifiers in November for you to be able to get a ticket? Why not just say the champions? Okay, if it's uh, 
an Olympic year, mm -hmm. then why not just go straight into the Olympics? Okay, so, so Can this, just is, change this, this is actually a FIBA thing. It's not, That's it's not, what I'm saying. It's FIBA, not FIBA, no, FIBA yeah. FIBA, okay, FIBA. Yeah, it's FIBA. not FIBA Africa, okay. you know, it's, it's FIBA. They're the and, and they're changing the whole concept. Why? Because, um, I mean, we've been talking about basketball in the last how many months? Yeah. You know, in, in times past, we always had like a two-year gap without nothing happening in basketball yeah. because you just play the Afro basket and you're done. Mm -hmm. Two years, you've qualified for the Olympics because it's usually a year preceding either the World Cup or the Olympics. Wait, I think it was so, always... No, World Cup year. No, no, usually what okay. they do is you play you play a year before. Okay. So you win the Afro basket, you qualify for the World Cup. Or you win the Afro basket, you qualify for, for the, the Olympics. Olympics. Yes. So it, there was always a gap and a void. And now FIBA is deliberately trying to grow the game. That's right. why we had the qualifying series to the World Cup, mm -hmm. I know. five I windows. Know that. You know, so it's it's why just not, the same. Why not if you're having I know they're trying to you're gonna also have qualifiers for the men. Right. I get I get your point. My point is if you're having, if you finish good and you have an opportunity to go straight to the Olympics, why not just say, okay, the winners or the runner will qualify automatically, then the others play the qualifiers? Why well, everyone? No, I know the gap will still be filled, but why not just let the others? For, the qualifiers for the yes. women's, for example, yeah. is the top six teams mm -hmm. from the Afro basket. Yes. So it's not everybody. Mm -hmm. It's just like the same way at this World Cup um, that we're mm -hmm. currently playing, the top seven teams will qualify automatically, yeah. you know, to. Tokyo yeah. 2020, and then the best Please. records yeah. from Each those. Of the yeah, unfortunately, this year this is not a World Cup year for the women. Yeah. Mm. The World Cup was played last year. last year, and we've moved on to the Afro basket. Yeah. So, and they are no longer using the regional, you know, championships so they have to, to play qualify. The qualifiers. So they have to play the qualifiers, so you know, to qualify forward. through. The idea is make basketball a little bit, you know, more competitive. Mm. Also, exposure. The more games we watch, the more we get familiarized mm. with the players, with the teams, and of course, it will help even the federations with funding. Mm. Because I mean, you can't just have a, a two weeks tournament every two years, and you expect to get major sponsors to back you up. But mm. when there are a series of activities going on. Those sponsors can look at points of activation, how they can, you know, reach out to the public because it's more in the faces, there's television, a lot of things are going to it. So I think it's, it's a good thing um, FIBA is going through this. But I know also because it's a new invention, okay. it's, it will take time to regularize. Yes. I think by the next window, definitely, we'll you know, it. yeah. The, and, and of course, for example, the women for the first time are going to be playing these qualifiers. Yeah. Usually there's an Olympic qualifying tournament. Yeah. And even the winners of Afro Basket and the runners-up are the two people that qualify for the Olympic, Olympic qualifying, qualifying tournament. Yeah. But I'm sure by the next one, they would, it, 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 would, it would definitely change. So um, it, for me, it's a good one. Even if you look at the, the format of the World Cup, a lot of people were confused, yes. you know, with how it works. But I think it's a smart one, smart invention from FIBA. What they did was, you know what, every, every group has four teams. The top two teams qualify to the well, next round. Them. Then they group them again. You know, the against themselves, is. classification. Even the even the second round. Now, the second round is not a one-off game, and you qualify. You know, you play two games. You know, in the second round, and all your points are added together, which determines if you're going to go to the quarterfinals. It's just one more games or what? More games for the teams <laughs> to play, and and I think and I like it. It's like also it. fair. It's really? fair because every team plays the same number of games. games. For example, Nigeria is going to the Olympic Games based on a better record than Tunisia. Unlike saying. Maybe, oh, you play the tougher opponent and you start using exponentials mm -hmm. and mathematics yeah. to say this team is better. So everybody plays the same number. Mm -hmm. Your points, your wins and losses count. And so you can justify the reason why you are better, than, better the than the next person. Mm -hmm. Because you play the same number of games and you did better than them. Not by your opponent that you are playing. Exactly.